Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Welcome to Instinctive Awareness. Before getting into the video, I would like to point out that it has definitely been a while since I've actually uploaded something on this channel. And no, I did not abandon the channel. It was mainly because I am planning to upload a video on Neon Genesis Evangelion next. And anyone who has actually watched that series knows just how complicated the ending of that anime can be. So it actually took me multiple viewings over the past entire month to completely nail my analysis of that video because I really just wanted to take my time and do justice to a series like that. So yeah, there's that. I think after uploading this particular video, it will take me barely another five days to upload the Evangelion video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So from now on, the uploads will get regular once again. It will be one upload every five to seven days. And with that out of the way, we can now get into the main context of this video. So I watched five centimeters per second, and I must say it was just really interesting. That is the best way I can actually describe it. Now, five centimeters per second is what I would describe as an anti-romance. And I do not mean it in the sense that it opposes the idea of romance itself, because all said and done, at the end of the day, it is a romance movie. When I say anti-romance, I mean that it is structurally very different from other romance movies that I have watched so far, to the point where it actually opposes the general structure of a regular romance. Now, when we talk about romance anime, or for that matter, romance movies in general, we expect a movie to follow a certain general structure, don't we? At least in most cases. Two protagonists start off at a certain level of proximity and as the movie progresses, they slowly get closer and closer to each other. The line distancing them gets thinner and thinner. Whether or not they end up with each other depends on the narrative of the respective movies, but for the most part, a romance movie will almost always explore two people getting closer over the course of the film. But 5 centimeters per second does the exact opposite of this. Instead of exploring two people actually getting closer over the course of the film, the movie instead starts off with our two main characters being as close as two people can ever be. It suffocates any space for bridging the proximity of our two main characters, Takaki and Akari. In the very beginning of the movie, they are extremely close to each other. And from this point on, instead of exploring the characters growing closer to each other, the movie instead chooses to explore these two people growing further apart as life takes its course. The movie pretty much divides itself into three different segments. The first segment is very interestingly named Cherry Blossom. Cherry blossoms are known to be symbols of change and evolution, as they mark the coming of a new season, symbolizing that something is about to change. And in the context of this movie, something does change. In the first segment itself, we see Akari move to a different town, away from Takaki. The film uses a lot of natural elements to further its symbolism, but we will get to that in just a bit. Sticking to this particular segment, we see Takaki taking a train to go and meet Akari. I would like to point out that Takaki's breakdown in the train, as the train gets more and more delayed, is one of the most raw and realistic portrayals of emotion that I have seen in a long time. But nevertheless, he reaches his destination and finds Akari still waiting for him. At this point, there is heavy snowfall going on in Akari's town. And like I mentioned earlier, the movie actually likes to use a lot of natural elements to further enhance its symbolism, and the snowfall here is no exception. Snowfall is seen as a symbol of rebirth and resurrection, hinting clearly that our characters are about to experience a major change, that something is about to die and something new is about to be born. As Takaki and Akari exchange a kiss in the snow, we can see where this is all headed. Takaki's inner monologue says everything that we need to know about what he is thinking. For him, this is a new beginning. He has fallen in love with Akari. As for Akari, it is a new beginning too, but in a very different way. For her, it is the beginning of a life away from Takaki. For her, it was a goodbye kiss. Unlike Takaki who lost his letter, Akari chose not to give him the letter that she had written because for her, this was a point where she was ready to separate ways with her childhood friend. While Akari seems to have moved on, as is apparent from her lack of presence in the story, Takaki cannot seem to let go of her. In the second segment of the movie, we see things from the perspective of Kane, a high school classmate of Takaki who has a crush on him. It is the small details that tell us a lot about Takaki's obsession and his inability to let go of Akari, like his habit of writing emails but never actually sending them, just to maintain a sense of connection with Akari, and just in order to maintain the illusion that he is still connected to her. The distance between the two has increased throughout the story. In the first scene, it was just the train tracks, each of them on the opposite ends. Then they moved to different towns and the distance further increased, 
And now, at this point in the story, the connection is essentially lost as Takaki is grasping at straws. Kane rightly describes Takaki in one of the final scenes of the second segment, saying that just like the spaceship that flies out of the orbit, Takaki is also reaching out for something, something that is far, far away, but he is still desperately trying to get to that one thing. For Takaki, life at this point is much like how we see the world in general. We have a central vision which focuses on what we are seeing right now and a peripheral vision which is basically what we see outside of our point of focus or in simple terms, whatever we vaguely see from the side of our eye without focusing on it is called the peripheral vision. For Takaki, Akari is the central vision of his life to such an extent that he has essentially pushed everyone else into his peripheral vision. He is still polite and empathetic as a person but his eyes are searching for something else. Akari is the only thing that he is fixated on, while everyone else just exists on the sidelines of his vision. In the third and final segment of the movie, we see a grown-up Takaki. He gets an email which he says is from the girl who he has been with for three years now. But his lack of response makes it clear to the audience that while she is with him, he is not with her. And I would like to point out that this small moment was actually pretty significant because up until this point we had always seen Takaki being true to the kind of person that he was being empathetic, considerate, and very caring of whatever other people felt. However, at this point, he just blatantly ignores the message of the girl who is in love with him. Takaki himself mentions in the next scene that with time, he had realized that his own morals had dissipated. His fixation on just one person throughout his life had caused him to isolate himself from the rest of the world, including the people who actually cared about him. Takaki is alone and he has no one to blame but himself, because he was the one who isolated himself due to his inability to let go of the past. In the final scene of the movie, we can see Takaki and Akari crossing paths as they are once again on the opposite sides of the railway track. They are close again, they are not in different cities anymore, they are at the same place, in the same moment, and the only thing between them is just a few feet of railway tracks just like it was in their childhood. And yet, Despite being so close to each other, they are as far as they would ever be. They are complete strangers at this point. While the proximity between the two is closer than ever, the distance between them is larger than it has ever been. And I really do think that there was no real better way to actually end this story. A story that was so beautiful, yet so cruel at the same time. A story that was not afraid to go against the general tropes of the romantic genre.